What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode. So this week I was originally going to do the wheels, but let me show you guys what actually happened of why I can't do the wheels now. I had these things all prepped, ready to paint and everything like that. Looking at it just to make sure I was wheeling them down here on some level surface and I noticed something on the side right here. You could definitely see it on camera. Curves in. Curves in this way. It's bent. So I talked to a guy, like a wheel medic guy, and he said to knock it back with a little bit of a heat and a piece of wood. I already tried that and uh, did not budge whatsoever. So I think he said 160 a piece to true these up and correct them. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's a lot of money, but at the same time, you don't want to be skimping on wheels. And these are the original wheels to this car, so I can go ahead and buy brand new. I think one wheel was like 200 and some dollars, but still expensive and it's not going to be the original wheel not only one but two of these are like that this is the worst one of the two so i only have two good wheels out of the four i do have a spare in the back uh, but it has a tire on it and i didn't prep that other one yet in the back and i think it's kind of cool because it has the goodyear uh tires on it in the trunk so i think i'm just gonna leave that there i know it's probably dry rotted and stuff but it holds air and it looks pretty cool if you pop the trunk open today instead I am going to be back on the engine, going to be pulling everything top end wise off uh, the intake manifold with the carb, valve covers, and then that way I could definitely see which cam, either hydraulic or saw lifter that this car has, and then I could also get the valves dialed in a lot easier to see when the push rods are opening each of the valves when I have the intake manifold off. This will also give me a chance to clean up the intake and these valve covers, this terrible orange stuff that they painted on top of it. I'm also gonna be taking off the headers. I get those sandblasted and ceramic coated. In the future video, I'm gonna be doing that. And then that'll give me a chance to reseal this uh, leak on each side. Got new bolts for the intake manifold, black of course. And I also got a new distributor, HEI distributor, just to roll out that as well. It's just a cheaper unit. I think it's an Excel unit. But, um, this one that I have on there now is actually off the 77 Corvette that I own and uh, just replaced the cap on it, but it started acting a little finicky, I think. So who knows if that was on its way out. I still have the stock coil on top of that. So that might've been acting a little weird the last video with the misfire, if that wasn't due to the valves. Um, who knows at this point, but I'll be taking that off, replacing it with this new unit, storing that one. I think I'm gonna end up doing fuel injection later on down the road. I'll switch this. Someone commented about the ported vacuum versus the manifold vacuum for the vacuum advance. So I'll switch these off when I uh, get them all changed out. A lot of helpful comments on the last video. So I really appreciate you guys helping me out on that. A lot of good mechanics on this page. Another comment that stood out to me that I was thinking in the back of my head and then just kind of reiterated the point. Saw lifter cams, I was running just normal oil and I was thinking about the zinc content was super low in today's cruddy oil and everything. So I maybe I did wipe a lobe off on this cam because I didn't add a zinc additive to it. I wasn't thinking at the time when I was starting this up. I probably should have just added a zinc additive on top of the oil when I replaced it for the first startup because it just started misfiring all of a sudden. Someone also mentioned maybe a burnt exhaust valve. Hopefully that's not the case. I'd rather it be a wiped cam lobe. Kind of want to tinker around a little bit on this now, see if I can get this running without pulling it. And uh, if I can ever get it driving back before the summer ends. So countdown is on. Let's get started and taking off these top end components and see what exactly that I have in here.
But now I can have access to getting the engine to sit on top that center prior to pulling the uh, distributor. So it'll also give me access to these power steering lines that I have to replace anyway. So get everything done at one time. So I'm just feeling by compression to see if it's spitting out of this uh, spark plug hole for the number one cylinder. And I'm also watching the distributor. See how close we're getting. There we go. So that's on the compression. Have to look at my timing marks, line it up now. And I'll be good to pull everything off. So that is right on zero. So if you guys can see there, see that line is right on the zero mark. And the cap is also pointing right to number one. So I was really close when I was dropping this in, so I don't know. Has to be some other issue. at first glance looks super clean besides that antifreeze that I just got mixed in there from pulling this off so here are the lifters I'm gonna have to get a flashlight to see what they exactly are here okay guys so here is what the top of the lifters look like um, it has a c-clip in there and I think this is a saw lifter just by looking at the tops because it has the C-clip rather than the different retaining ring that a hydraulic lifter would have. I also tightened down the top of the rocker nut just to give this a test. So I tightened it one full turn, watched down there to see if that plunger would move down, and it didn't, so it didn't bleed out even after 5-10 minutes sitting it there. Um, so that would mean that if it would go down, it would be in a hydraulic valve because it has the oil filled up in there and it has that spring with the plunger in it so it didn't move didn't budge uh back this off just so i know where it was at one full turn again so i think this is a saw lifter cam let me know what you guys think below down in the comments i probably will pull one of these lifters just to make sure as well but just looking at it now i do think this is a saw lifter uh camshaft so whoever guessed that uh, you have a good ear because someone there's a couple people that said it sounds like a saw lifter cam and I don't have a really good microphone on this camera here so actually pretty impressive so good job on the uh, the guess also note I do believe this is the stock head on this car or heads let's see if you can see that with the light so it is I think six four five was the last three digits here um, so that would be the stock head for a 73 from what I've been looking up. So nothing fancy that I see going on here. Just think this is a stock setup for a 73 Z28 Camaro besides them changing out the cam and potentially these valve springs here. I don't know if those are originals or not. Uh, but yeah, pretty good stock car basically.
All right guys, so next I'm gonna get these headers off to get these sandblasted. Gotta take the plugs out, all these bolts, and then I'll cut the old exhaust off, drop it down from underneath. So I've been fighting with this last bolt. Of course, it's always the last one. I can't get that out. I can't get a wrench on it. I uh, can't get a socket on it. It's just the way that's sitting in there. It's just too tight hitting up against one of the tubes. Got the bottom cut off and disconnected. So I'm gonna move over to the other side. I'll cut this other one off the bottom as well. Uh, all three bolts where the collector meets on the bottom, they were seized up, of course. So I'm just cutting off the pipes. I was trying to save them, but I have to cut them off. Let's see if I can remove these headers on the driver's side. Hopefully. Maybe I gotta hold up. So right down there, it's hitting on that bracket for the clutch. So I'll pop that off and I guess <laughs> drop it down after that. So to get to the clutch linkage down there, I decided I'm just going to remove this master cylinder now. Uh, I have a new one already, so I'm planning on replacing it anyway. And I figured let's take it off now so I can get to that, disconnect the linkage, pop that off, drop this down, move on the other side, and then just see what everything looks like and start cleaning everything up. Okay, so after struggling trying to get these nuts off these rear studs here, very confined space, I ended up doing a 916 ratcheting wrench. So I ended up buying a set of those. You know, cut down on probably two hours of just going one little minute click at a time uh, with a normal wrench or a open box wrench. But anyway, got that off. Now I can get to all the clutch linkage a lot easier. That'll allow me to then disconnect that shaft across there for the clutch that pivots on that ball. And then I could drop this header down. Then after that, I will finally go on to this driver's side or passenger side and drop the starter because that is what's holding this one up now. Update on the bolt. We ended up just denting in this header right here to remove that bolt that was stuck. And uh, that worked out pretty well there. So also I have been not doing a lot of car stuff lately just due to the fact that Every day for the past four days that I've been off, I've been working on this fence. I'll show you what I've been doing here. Put all this fencing up. Very hard to find wood now with uh, the coronavirus and everything going around. But had to level all this out, make a drainage path for the gutter as well. Made a gate, wrapped it all the way down to that end, curved it around that way. So a lot of digging, a lot of moving dirt. Had to level all this out, still do. So it's just been a ton of work, yard work. Anyway, it's what I've been doing instead of working on anything car related. But now I'm done with the fence, just got to do the land leveling and uh, starting to get back onto the Camaro and uh, maybe look at the 240Z as well here pretty soon. I was thinking on the way here, on um, while driving home from work one night, since I have everything that I'm going to be dropping down, like the headers and everything, which, you know, dropping all this stuff at one time and then maybe not even potentially fix fixing the issue of uh, the misfire. I think that I'm just going to pull the engine now, do rebuild on it, do correctly, and I won't have to be worried about anything. So by the time I was done, you know, back and forth trying to diagnose everything, I could have had the engine out already and uh, on its way to being rebuilt. So I'll pull that out. I think that's the plan next. Found out that it's most likely a saw lifter cam. Um, 
you know, correct me if I'm wrong, just by looking at the top of those uh, lifters. And I did the method of turning down the nut. I just don't know the cam specs on this engine. And I, I hate not knowing what is in this car. By judging by the way that it's not running correctly, I think it's just a good idea to pull it now. Just kind of rip into it and see what exactly is going wrong. Look at the bearings on the bottom end, make sure everything is good. And maybe if, if everything is okay, where I don't have to do a machine any machine work at all, uh, just do a top end rebuild kit on it. Replace the cam to what I actually know, what I would want to see the cam be, most likely hydraulic lifter. You let me know in the comment section below if this is the route you take. I think that it's making the right decision, just dropping everything off the starter done. So I just have to disconnect a couple grounds, a couple little things on the front. I already have all the um, radiator basically is ready to pull out as well disconnect some wiring and then this will be ready to hook up and yank out of the car probably take off the hood because it doesn't look like there's a lot of clearance on this hood for uh, taking out the engine i'll be ready to pull it and dive a little bit deeper into this and finally see what the heck is wrong with this car but yeah i think that's the plan let me know below what you guys think um let me drop the starter show you guys what the headers look like and then that'll do it for this episode so i appreciate you guys sticking around and it's been a couple weeks since i filmed so i'm not that consistent but then again I can't film and then try to do um fence work and everything at the same time i gotta do a little bit here a little bit there so i'll be back in the groove now the fence is up get cracking on this car again Finally got these headers out, got the starter out, got the clutch disconnected, or linkage of the clutch disconnected, uh, brake booster out. So next week, I don't know what, what I'll be exactly doing. There's so much to do on this car. Maybe I'll be pulling out the engine. Maybe I'll be the week after. I want to get these wheels straightened still. Uh, I got to get these headers sandblasted and recoated, which I'll be doing myself with some Cerakote. So a lot of work to be done, but I think this is a step in the right direction. I just think pulling the engine is the best decision right now. Rebuilding it, clean up the engine bay at the same time. It's just I didn't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I already am starting. So might as well do it right right now. And then maybe I'll be able to drive this before fall is ended. <laughs> but we'll see. I remember when I wanted to get this done by end of July. And uh, now it's August, middle of August. So we'll see though. Push it back and uh, see how it goes. Again, appreciate you guys sticking with me. As always, have a great rest of your week. I will see you next week for the next episode.